and gentlemen, um, I could not resist the urge to go back to this video right here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Integrity Commission in the House of Representatives answering questions and 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 really, you know, detailing what needs to be detailed to bring clarity. And I think this was well needed. And I think all well-thinking Jamaicans should definitely go and listen. Because this is legislation, this is law, it's going to allow you not to get manipulated by outside people that come and say this and that about the Integrity Commission. Alright? So let's hear what the Chairman has to say. I want to add a personal note, Mr. Chairman, if you'll allow me, that back on this question of malice, I have been a lay preacher in the Methodist Church for decades. Malice is not in my makeup, and it is not in the makeup of the commissioners. And there may be persons who need to repent, mm. and they can join me at church, Providence Methodist, any Sunday. I wonder who might have a... I don't know if something is wrong with the water in Parliament. I don't know either. Why some people, the moment they get into Parliament, they say certain things and behave a certain way. Mm. I don't know if that is it. Mm. As a result, I did not write that. <laughs> you think a laughing matter? You think a joke matter this? I wasn't going to take the chance of drinking any water here. You man, make sure you carry one water. You think you're a joke? Another feature, Mr. Chairman, which I'm very serious Sonia about, Forrest, big is up. Is that I, because of what has been happening, I personally intend to see if I can meet with Senator. Long more? No, that's serious. All the integrity commission chairman are tell the government to repent. No, I'm not even catch that. No, seriously. All the integrity commission, bro. He bad, bro. He bad. Doctor, to have a word with her because it may well be that she needs to have a word with some members of the house. And so I present to you, Mr. Chairman, the sixth annual report which has been compiled in keeping with the law the law sorry um mr chairman not to interrupt you and the flow not to interrupt and you while interrupting you the, lord have mercy wonderful parliamentary theatrics that we saw a while ago em 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 which you brought but the member is showing an interest in making no i'm sorry then They need to repent for oh, you, I, man. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm finishing now, sir. I present to you this document, this annual report, 231 pages, 32 pages with audited financial statements. And trust that it will be read by parliamentarians, just as how I hope all parliamentarians will read the legislation and not to give people the impression that the commission is doing things outside of the legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I heard your very extensive statement and um, the tenure tone of it, um, which gives concern, concern to this chair and I'm sure to the committee. And no doubt they will have some reactions to, um, to it because we want to ensure that not just you, but the commission understands that there is no determined effort to undermine or otherwise to stigmatize and or mm. categorize any member in any negative or derogatory way and that, that's cap uh, whenever we are aware of any such situation that from the committee side when we meet we do have comments to make in that regard um the purpose of this meeting here today in particular is to further state the point of how symbiotic the relationship has to be between the parliament and the commission we, we, we are established to enable a better and stronger working relationship and to remove all the doubts and, and shadows that may appear or seem to appear over either the commission itself or the parliament and parliament here. That is the purpose in the end. And so we are concerned to hear the things that you have said. And um, we would be... Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. What in fact, we would be very exercised by your being able to provide some specifics that we can work with, not necessarily at this meeting, but... Oh! Mr. Chairman, 
I'm sure the door is. Open. He wants specifics about what man are talking about, but he don't want him to say it in a meeting or so. Because it's a go to the world. What a big old hypocrite. One more specifics that, that we want that we ever want me to say what I'm out. Eh? And we, and we Prime Minister say what I'm out. One more specifics you want. You think you're an idiot? Remember, say, man, the lie, you know, brother. You man, not going to say certain things, brother. Me can show a video. All the honor, we are deal with. Big up. Hey, you have to watch a replay, you know, bro. Oh, me I tell you, say, this alive, you've been fire. All the live, I'm going to do this morning. If you guys have not caught the live I did this morning, you have to watch the live I did this morning. I'm telling you, do not miss the replay. And share that one with your family too. Because a lot of you guys don't know or understand the ramifications of the government signing some more agreement. And make sure you send it to the labor right friend them too and family too. May they understand the Prime Minister who has that's done to this country. The 20-year commitment that he has made by signing the some more agreement. Alright? Good. It's open for us to have discussions and to look at matters such as what you have said and other matters which no doubt members of the committee might be able to, to, to say and, 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 and to um, you know, see it done. But the purpose overall is for the two teams to work together. And as chairman to chairman, I want you to be assured of the confidence that reposes between the two positions. I have great confidence in you as chairman. Well, um, I'm as only chairman, making the point. I have confidence I'm, in you. I'm making, I'm making the point, chairman, that in all... Yeah, man, I make, he man, I make it clear so I have confidence now. you. Singular, you. Not the entire government. You. Of this, we have to make sure that the confidence is also between our oversight committee, this team in parliament that works with you, and of course, the full commission. Um, members, I see Member Paul Well, and I recognize it. He bought double and easy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chairman. I also join in welcoming the commissioners, and indeed, this is unprecedented. And uh, I certainly have taken note. All right, I need to slow it down a little bit because this man and I really talk that slow enough. All right, let's go. Here we go. Careful note of the Chairman's um, opening submissions, and I think the country will as well. Chairman, I want to, to go. Hey, I think he means it. He makes sure saying, I like the first comment, so he makes it. You know. Because he knows the country will as well. Because he knows the truth. Although he's not on the PNB side. I like how he do that. Yeah, man. Emphasize it because of facts. Fundamental question that we have grappled with here in this committee. As to the role and purpose of an oversight committee. Almost in a supervised way. Well, oversight role. To a commission that by law, section 6.3 in the exercise of its powers and performance of its functions under this act, the Commission shall not, A, shall not be subject to the direction or control of any other person or authority other than the courts, and B, shall act independently, impartially, fairly, and in the public interest. At the commencement of the, of your welcome, you referred to our standing orders. And I think it is right that we are reviewing these standing orders because I have expressed time and time again my discomfort in how we view the Commission, how, how we view their reports. Um, and perhaps we could get a view from the Commissioners today about that. My view has always been that as an oversight committee, we should be mindful of the effectiveness in terms of the budget, in terms of the staffing of the Commission and to ensure that those things are adequately provided and as a body overseeing them, we would advance their case in the House to ensure that they get their money, they get their staffing. But apart from that, especially when it comes down to reports that come to us, you know I have always had a difficulty in addressing their particular method methods the investigations the outcomes because i don't think that's that is within our purview but we could be confused by these standing orders so perhaps we could get a view from the commissioners as to how you see the functioning of this committee under these standing orders and whether or not we are not stepping outside of what would be appropriate um, i don't have to 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 to, to remind this this um, committee that there was even a view that we could mandate the Integrity Commission. 
um, that is quite outlandish. So I'll pause to await a response from the Commission. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman. I don't know why that question they go over on the head, you know. The man said there was a view that they could mandate the Integrity Commission. Let's hear the response. I, I am satisfied that at least one member of the Oversight Committee understands the law. God, shots fired. Yo, he said at least one. He's satisfied that at least one member of the oversight committee understands the law. Oh my God, Lord have mercy. Embarrassing. <laughs> he needs some milk. Ooh, how do you feel? Only oh, about they feel. The one somebody will understand the law. Pan the oversight committee, I, I, I PMP member. Come on, man. Come on, man. Something not right, my wisdom warriors. Come on, Something man. Something is not right. Come hmm. on, Hello, man. Them. What is going on? I agree with his position. Because the section, section 63, clearly states the independence of the commission. I mean, it's not the commission that made it. It's the parliament that passed it and and uh no, there's no report that we put forward that can be amended or changed in any way by the oversight committee it cannot happen so um jamaica only hear that there is no report that is put forward that can be amended by the oversight committee it cannot happen on a member good full clarity this is from the chairman of the integrity commission no 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 hear no listen no tell no friend them for run come over here so we have got you it you remember good coming here today i must tell you chairman i am here because of respect for the parliament and respect for you you hear that he man i make sure I tell him say oi i never had to come here no? the only reason why i'm here no it's because I respect you, you know, chairman, you know, and I respect the parliament. But otherwise, you cannot summon me. You understand what I say? Hey, hey, member good, no man. Member good, no man. Come like they're not here. Come like they're not here. This way, uh, this way, general I say. Because I don't think there is really any need for the commission to come in person before parliament. <clears throat> I, I will, I will have some comments on that. I'm seeking advisement in terms of the um, standing orders and the power of the parliament in relation to uh, this area, and whether or not, as the member seeks to, to find out there is um, a disconnect because if the parliament has oversight responsibility with all these areas as enunciated by section 73b of the standing orders and the standing orders is what guides the parliament that's the authority of this house and it gives us authority to act um, and, and then if it contravenes the act th then we we have a conundrum um, but i defer to my legal colleagues on the committee chairman i i had my mic on but it's it's not on this issue, so I yield to well, my colleague. Well, I, 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 I'm on this issue. I've been very clear that this oversight body is not an appeal body. We can't change reports. We have to accept them as they come. Oh! So, only am right to hear that? It is coming from the side of your people that tell us that they can't change. No, 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 here. We are going to get some clarity tonight. But well, the idea of an oversight committee has always been where commissions of parliament take the opportunity to be able to see to an oversight body some of the concerns, some of the problems that they may have and whether or not they get the resources that they need and for that oversight body sometimes to inquire whether the operation of the commission, how they engage in their operation. So 
I think that the oversight body is not meant to be an appeal, and I've said it repeatedly. But the few times that directors have come here, we have been able to get good information from them as to, say, the number of certificates, sorry, number of um, decorations that they have been able to check, and whether, in fact, you know, you're able to check 40,000 and whether or not the limit of 3 million should not be moved to 12, and we get good information to be able to move the figure from 3 to 12. So this oversight body, uh, Chairman, has the opportunity to even ask the commissioners, since 2018, has this government provided the resources you need to perform your duties and operations? so that up to the fiscal year last year, I was able to ask, you got one point, approximately 1.5 billion. Was that sufficient? I got the impression it was sufficient. This year, it has, was increased to 1.8 billion. And in fact, you have requested more in your supplementary, in the supplementary budget. You're likely to get 2 billion in this fiscal year. So that, is there any way, commissioners or directors, that you have asked for resources that the government has not provided. And in all sincerity, one of the questions I would like to ask, for the last six years, you have got in excess of $8 billion. How many reports have you done? I mean, these are questions which is not necessarily an annual. It, it would be useful for the public to know that the government has not refused you any resources. You have got it. And the opportunity is here to say we did not get what we wanted class brief you can never tell a lie bro <laughs> and to say that we were not you were not able to conduct more research as the case may be so the oversight bodies where the commission has the opportunity to present its case openly just like how we have the opportunity to ask how do you operate and i mean if i might shift from that position to ask the question a report that comes to Parliament, is that report the report of the Director of Investigation or is it the report of the Commission? So, I mean, I know it is signed by Mr. Kevin Stevenson, but is it Mr. Kevin Stevenson, Director of Investigation's report or has it been certified, checked by the Commission? Just first question. Right. So, um, Chairman, I believe that the member Member Charles wants to make an intervention, but if it is that you wish to answer ahead of that, because I believe what he has to say will comport somewhat with the um, original question that Minister Member Paulwell raised. You know, some more on a notice it two one where parliamentarians them have with the Integrity Commission director. Listen to the tone. Only hear nobody a bad up them and a try ray. When you see the man, them have the, the, the angle. And them have the angle, you know. Them are investigate only, you know. So you better tread softly. Because I eat down over there. <laughs> seven one gone and seven more left under investigation. So you better be careful. You remember good. <clears throat> and why is this why is this um argument about how much money they get to investigate? If they get enough money. So what them I do? Question if the integrity commission I get too much money through the investigation I that the model Very interesting Very interesting, but you can't waste money power empty building for how much million a dollar How much trillions of dollars missing from the prime minister office the, 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 the office of the prime minister Eh? Hey, what kind of bangarang is this? What can go so Concerning the relationship between the oversight committee and the commission and the power that the standing order gives it in relation to what the act says at section 63 so um if you would allow him yes yes to ask you so you would have the two questions to answer or if you wish to answer directly to this one and then you go to, okay fine please go ahead. yes a report that comes to parliament is the report of the director of investigation that's how it's done in the law the law provides for the director of investigation to investigate and to report report is passed to the executive director to be passed to the commission. The commission looks at the report and 
tries to ensure that there are no um, misstatements, but it's not the commission's report as such. It is the director of investigation. And we, according to the law, are the body that are supposed to pass it on to parliament. So it should not be thought that the report is one crafted by the commissioners. Not at all. But at the same time, we ensure to make sure that the director of investigation is acting within the law. All right. The report is not clear what I'm saying. Listen to that again. By the commissioners. Very important. And we, according to the law, are the body that are supposed to pass it on to parliament. So it should not be thought that the report is one crafted by the commissioners. Not at all. But at the same time, we ensure to make sure that the director of investigation is acting within the law. All right. So they make sure that the people investigating is acting within the law. So they suing the anti-owners are sue them. It him have fall upon him face now. Hey, me say him have fall upon him face. Ladies and gentlemen, he me say if Andrew owners have set up himself for a big old... He better just resign. Make the thing go through and my man and do what they do with the FSC and not in the public eye for all well thinking Jamaicans seem like he's trying to in, in um um allegedly um where you call it interrupt a, 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 a police investigation is it, that's not the word but you don't know me at that word somebody will know the legal terminology me know some smart people there class prefect when they say obstruct right allegedly we don't want them fit we don't him, 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 him don't want the people in the public think that he's trying to obstruct justice by staying in parliament um as the prime minister right where is now the allegedly the finance minister right where 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 where, where actually is the director for the FSC, the same body we are investigating. Like, am I getting all of this right? Isn't this a conflict of interest? Just like when wife is the speaker of the house. Like, there is so much conflict of interest when dealing with this man, Andrew Holness, his wife, Everett Warmington, and Desmond Mackenzie. Why am I put them to the up there? Because of the statements that they have made. One of them said, I'm going to go, if we put in life on the line for defend the Prime Minister, and the next one I tell the people, I'm saying, if we take it to the streets for defend the Prime Minister. Right? Come on, man. Come on. This is this is ridiculous. And then them, them change the Constitution, them change, not the Constitution, then change, them amend something to make the DPP become a part of the, 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 the Supreme Court Committee. The same one that's supposed to give the verdict for Andrew Owen's claims when against the Integrity Commission. All of this is very, 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 very alarming. Very, very alarming. And then the pastor reveal now, thus said the Lord, that he is a master mason. No. When me hear talking on my TV, he said that man, I think. Jamaica will to him, you know. You know, some I believe saying so really thinks that Jamaica will to him. No, seriously, may I tell you? So, what is ClickUp? Yeah. ClickUp is an all in one product. All the IC is asking for is transparency. That is true. Pat W. Cebola, Andrew never win a court battle yet. How could he win this one when it's facts 100? Andrew's going down. Mighty God, talk it through, man. So if the director of investigation has submitted a report to you, the commissioners or to the executive director, is it the normal thing that he would share the live guys, share the live parliament immediately, or you have a you as the executive director or the commissioners can say this report should not go forward? Well, we, we haven't had we have not had that situation um, as far as I can recall. But let's go back to the beginning of the um, as, as the to you, the commissioners are to. Make we hear that question there again. So, if the director of investigation has submitted a report to you, the commissioners are to the executive director, 
is it the normal thing that he would it would be sent to Parliament immediately, or you have a you as the executive director or the commissioners can say this report should not go forward? Why is he buckling? We haven't had we have not had that situation um, as far as I can recall. But let's go back to so the question when asked or something whenever let's move on beginning of the this commission members will recall that there was an inquiry done an investigation done in respect of what is called the rooms report and you will recall that there were certain conclusions arrived at by the then acting director of investigations who had been the contractor general and the conclusion included uh, a finding against two members of parliament. The commissioners read the report and did not think that the facts as appeared in the report justified the conclusion. And we issued a separate statement indicating our disagreement. And it's just that we seem to have very short memories. Mm. But that did happen. <laughs> and of course, some people were not pleased that the commissioners did not agree with the director of investigation. Well, so far, the reports that have been submitted to us, we have not, that we have passed on to parliament, we have not seen anything for us to say that they should not go to parliament. But with your respect, um, chairman, there's one in which the director of investigation submitted a final investigation report on February 19, 2023. This report was not tabled in the House of Parliament. I mean, this is coming. This is coming from a report you sent to us. May the director be allowed to answer that last? Yes, I suspect that matter has to do with a matter that is in court. Um, we're so about if, reports. If, hey! if, we're to, if we're going to open that gate, then um, let us open Chairman, it. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish that that gate be open, but I think it's in the generality of reports. Yeah. And this has to do with procedure. It, it, it doesn't really have to do with the specifics of a report. Oh! So no one pick and choose when we talk about a court case. Isn't it sub juicy? Sub judice? Isn't it sub judice? Or sub do J or whatever they want to call it? All of a sudden now, at this, at this, at the very person I talk about, come never get to watch all our video them, like, you know, me I skip through them, you know? At this show I talk about, so, oh, no, it don't matter if it is from the high court, you can't talk about in a parliament, because the question where you ask, fear of a fool aside, oh no fool, of, hey, let me hear a man answer this. It is, we, we understand the subject, the director can answer it. Sub yeah. Subjude, or whatever they want, okay. Subject K. Thank you very much, Chairman. And yeah. members, good morning. The provision that governs the tabling of reports in Parliament, or the treatment of reports generally, is Section 54 of the Integrity Commission Act. Uh, only certain reports are required under that section to be sent to Parliament for tabling. So, for example, if during the course of the investigation, the Director of Investigation is of the view that there is insufficient evidence to continue the investigation. Share the life, guys. Share the life. The Director will terminate the investigation and issue findings to the Commission. Uh, that report is not tabled. The other category of investigation reports would be investigation reports that contain findings which would which are considered to be a breach of code or any law or an act of corruption. That category of reports having been sent to the commission would thereafter be tabled. If it's only a breach of code, it would go directly to the commissioners then to parliament. If, it, if there's a breach of law and there is a recommendation to be sent to the director of corruption prosecution, the report is referred on to the director of corruption prosecution together with the file and having completed her ruling, that would be sent back to the commission and it is then sent to parliament for tabling. Well, I am not sure if I should comment on the no, no, report. No, 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 that no. Is Subjuke. Thank you so much, class prefect. Subju Subjudicate. That's how it's pronounced. Subjudicate. So now... Basically, what the man does say a while ago, if it's a code and it's sent to the 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 the, the next um, person, the, the commissioner, right? The commissioner sends that to parliament. But if it's a case where somebody needs to be prosecuted, it's sent to the to the to the DPP straight away because the evidence shows that this person needs to be prosecuted. So then I need to send it to the parliament for it to be tabled. It's gonna go directly. Let's listen that again. Let's, this is how I'm glad I'm looking over this. Breach of code, it 
would go directly to the commissioners then to parliament commissioners into parliament law and there is a recommendation to be sent to the director of corruption prosecution the report is referred on to the director of corruption prosecution director of corruption prosecution and together with the file and having completed her ruling that will be sent back to the commission and it is then sent to parliament for tabling oh so if it's something that is going against the law it goes to the director of corruption prosecution and then based off her decision is sent back to the commission and then it's tabled into the house of house of representative come on man we learning man come on man are you guys excited to learn as much as i am i'm excited i'm, I'm glad the integrity commission pulled up you feel me? I'm glad. Let's go. I'm not sure if I should comment on the. No, 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 no. You should not. No, no. no, because the follow-up question, Chairman, is simple. You do a lot of investigations, and you do reports on these investigations. What, what proportion of these investigations would you say you table reports on to the executive director or the commissioners? If you give me a second, Chairman. The so what? Well, report it itself. There is statistics on the all the matters that have been referred to me um, during the course of, of um, my tenure at the commission. Mm -hmm. There are two categories of uh, matters that may be referred. Um, the first category are complaints generally made by members of the public etc. And then there are referrals that come either from the director of information and complaints having to do with statutory declarations, financial investigations or the commission um, for further necessary action. Mm -hmm. um, so far in terms of complaints between 2018 and 2024 there were 246 such matters. You can find that at page 58 of the annual report for the year 2023-2024, financial year 2023-2024. Of that number, over the period, only 155 of those matters were pursued. Um, 12 of those matters were referred to the Director of Corruption Prosecution. 13 were referred internally, and by this I mean it could well be that, for example, there's a complaint on a contract. Um, if the contract is still ongoing, then we would refer it on to a monitoring unit to, 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 to review the um, execution of the contract and to provide findings. That does not necessarily result in an investigation report. And then there are matters that may be referred externally, for example, to our competent authorities or other entities, matters that are not in our remit, for example. Mm -hmm. And then there are matters that are closed on preliminary inquiry. Now, Section 47 of the Act uh, requires the Director of Investigation when a matter is referred to look at the matter, to see whether the matter is one that is frivolous and vexatious, whether another entity is dealing with it, or whether it is within the remit of the Commission at all. Mm. Um, during that process, um, information could be requested from external entities, uh, the complainant could be uh, spoken to, several investigative actions or preliminary investigative actions would be conducted. If at the end of the day, there is insufficient evidence to justify the conduct of a full investigation, then the matter is closed on preliminary inquiry. 82 such matters were closed during the period I referred to earlier, 2018 to 2024. Mm -hmm. You will also see at page 50 of the report, the number of matters completed over the five years period, or the six, 2018 to 2024, a total of 161 were tabled in Parliament, and you'll see the statistics there. Except I will, I will not go further into the statistics, ex except to say that of all the referral and referrals made to the Director of Investigation for this period, we have completed 96% of those matters. Ooh! Shout out to the Integrity Commission. Shout out to the Integrity Commission with the, with the, with the facts and the evidence. Because see, they've been trying to downplay the Integrity Commission and what they're actually doing he was even questioning um are we giving you too much money are we giving you enough money and you, you can see his line of questioning it has to do with the competency of the integrity commission now i went to school 96 percent is an a plus baby that's what i'm talking about oh yeah oh all yeah lies will be exposed oh that's yeah all. And, and, mm -hmm. and anyone who takes that the wrong way, mm -hmm. know why they take it the wrong mm -hmm. way. Ninety-six percent in your face, labor rights. So, really, truly, um, Chairman, the question is: Is the director of investigation completely independent as to what reports he continues, con terminates, or oh. report to the commissioners? And the commis you have to. The commissioners can direct you that it should stop or it should continue. The director of investigation is subject to the general and specific directions of the commission. Uh, in terms of the governance structure of the organization which, the, um, under which we operate, uh, the, the division is 
supervised by a committee, the Investigation and Corruption Prosecution Committee, and each month there's a report made to the committee, the matters that are being investigated or inquired into, uh, the completion of matters, etc. The operations generally of the commission, um, I make reports to the, the, the committee on those matters. So, the Integrity Commission have somebody that they have to answer to. They have to do an audit of their reporting to let them know what they're actually getting done and what they're what they're what they're looking into. Okay, all right. Is that enough for you, or do you have another question, sir? <laughs> Sorry, Chairman. Well, the deliberations were happening. I sought the legal advice in relation to the position of the uh, oversight committee vis-a-vis uh, the commission, and I was referred to Section Five Four A and B of the Integrity Commission's Act of 2017, which said the Commission shall, A, subject to Section 34.3 and 36.4, be ultimately responsible and accountable to Parliament for all matters relating to the functions of the Commissioner. And you can barely hear what is being said. Yo, now if you talk to me, no man, because my ears different, you know. You understand what I say? Yeah. And monitor and report to parliament on the operations and effectiveness of the provisions of this act so that's very clear i believe in terms of the reporting procedures in relation to accountability let's go back to that because she said she can't hear and people that's why if you talk to me this is why if you talk to me and communicate to me in our chat now big up noreen the commission shall go back to where you say the deliberations were happening i thought the legal advice in relation to the position of the uh, oversight committee vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the commission and i was referred to section 54 a and b of the integrity commission's act of 2017 which said the commission shall a subject to section 34 3 and 36 4 be ultimately responsible and accountable to parliament for all matters relating to the functions of the commissioner and monitor and report to parliament on the operations and effectiveness of the provisions of this act so that's very clear i believe in terms of the reporting procedures in relation to accountability uh, morning and welcome to the commission and the team i have three questions mm -hmm. uh, last year sometime i'd asked the members of the commission whether persons who are subject to an investigation for illicit enrichment, whether they are so notified, and you answered in the affirmative. I'm going further, and I'd like the commission, through this committee, to provide a sample copy of the letter which is sent to an individual who is the subject of an investigation for illicit mm. enrichment. I would like to satisfy myself as a member of this commission that there is clarity and there is no ambiguity in the correspondence from the Integrity Commission to individuals who are the subject of investigations for illicit enrichment. That's my first. You know why I said that? I asked for that. Because Andrew Ones contests that he never understand or he never know. So he might get investigated for specifically illicit enrichment. So I think this general and him, Julian, excellent, excellent request, my general. Big up yourself for that. Yeah, man. Big up yourself for that, man. Mm-hmm. 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 Big up yourself for that. First question. My second question, which may be directed to the director of investigations, I'd like to know what percentage of investigations undertaken by the Integrity Commission are referred to third-party bodies, units, for further investigation and what factors are used to determine those referrals to those third party bodies. Very good question. And my again. final question relates to the practice of the Integrity Commission, which discontinued the routine quarterly publication of contracts, which are awarded by the government of Jamaica to various bodies, and did so under the basis of an interpretation of the integrity commission act and i believe it's section 53.3 which you have interpreted to preclude you from doing that publication i'd like to know whether the integrity commission is open to seeking an independent legal opinion on that particular mm -hmm. provision and whether you would do so from the attorney general's chambers i personally don't support your interpretation and i 
I know for sure it was not the intention of the crafters of that particular clause for it to preclude something which is in the general interest of transparency and openness. So those are my three questions, Chairman. All right, advert. Ad yeah, Julian Robinson. Couldn't remember my last name. So they might go, they might go to advertisement and the advertisement are free. So what could I cause all of this guy? Just, just before the chairman responds, um, in the context of that first question with regards to illicit enrichment and, and a better understanding of what it is, um, I referenced the report of 2324 and, in fact, the message from the chairman. And, and I read that he, he says on illicit enrichment, they ask for that, that any person may be Please. orally or in writing make a complaint, give information or notify the integrity commission about a matter which involves or may involve an act of corruption or non-compliance with the act. He went on to elucidate on the matter by saying, when a person approaches the commission in this way, the director of information and complaint is compelled to record the complaint or information and submit it to the appropriate director of the commission for action. The act also provides that the annual report must contain a general description of the matters that were referred to the Commission and a general description of the matters being investigated by the Commission. The Commission has no control over the complaints and allegations it receives. It must, however, investigate them and make a note of the fact of the receipt and the investigation in the annual report. This is what the legislation passed by Parliament requires. The police received numerous complaints made the further points and allegations of various crimes that when investigated are found to be without merit. So does the Integrity Commission, which has no <coughs> control over speculations, rumors, or mischief-making in the society. Mm -hmm. And that was his line on illicit enrichment. So I just further to your question. So, so essentially what we're saying then is, is it that the illicit enrichment is these complaints, which you get... No, no, no. But it's important, I think, because in giving clarity to the whole process and this is from the chairman it's very important for us to take note of this yes if you allow me chairman what what you said is valid but it's not what i'm asking and i don't want it to be confused i we accept that any individual can make a complaint i'm not going there i'm going where you initiate an investigation i want to know the text of the correspondent correspondence sent to the individual because i need to satisfy myself that the individual is clear about what he or she is being investigated for. That's where I am going. Not whether Tom, Dick, or Harry send a complaint and whether it rises to the level of whether it, is, it meets the evidentiary bar to be investigated. It is when you commence and what you say to the individual once you commence. Oh, I hear you and I hear you well. But I read this piece because it gives a background to what could constitute the investigation so that the public understands clearly that the investigation may not be that the persons are guilty of anything. Unfortunately, that's the sense that the public gets once it's yes, open. Yes, morning. And I wanted that point to be made clear. And I think the chairman was very clear on it in his report, and it bears repetition. But proceed with the answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, chairman. Uh, on the first point, the first question, whether a person who is being investigated for illicit enrichment is notified by the commission and you want to know the exact text of the notification. Uh, yes. Uh, now, the, when a matter is referred on to, to the director of investigation for investigation, um, for example, illicit enrichment, um, it is the practice, as I recall it, of the director of inf information and complaints that he advises the declarant that the matter is being referred. Uh, my recollection, and you may correct me if I'm wrong, the letter does not say that you are being investigated for illicit enrichment. And he says that I'm correct. Now, when the matter comes to the director of investigation, that matter has to be assessed. There has to be investigation into the matter before the declarant can be advised that they are being investigated for illicit enrichment. Because the because the, the, the Director of Information and Complaints doesn't necessarily go in depth with the matter. 
Um, for me to, at the start, indicate to the person that you are being investigated for illicit enrichment might be a little bit premature because of what the legislation requires, Section 14.5 14 of the Corruption Prevention Act. So there is preliminary investigation or in-depth investigation. No. I would also send a letter to the person once I receive the matter to say that this matter has been referred to me. I will not necessarily say that you have been investigated for illicit enrichment for the same reason I mentioned earlier at that early stage. Now, once there is sufficient evidence that this person owns assets disproportionate to their lawful earnings, or there is some evidence of it, some indication, a notice is sent to the person. At the head of the notice, I don't have it in front of me now, there it states what section of what legislation the notice is being sent under, and then it will be section 48 and section 14.5, and the words illicit enrichment are also in the header of the notice. Now, if I may read for you um, maybe two paragraphs from the notice itself. It says, take notice that the Integrity Commission is investigating the statutory declaration submitted by you for the year so-and-so to determine, among other things, whether there are reasonable grounds to suspect that you have contravened Section 14.5, which is the section that deals with illicit enrichment, of the Corruption Prevention Act, and if there are any other legislation that we're looking at the person under, then we'll also state that in this case, there was Section 43.2 of the Integrity Commission Act or any other enactment and whether recommendations ought to be made here and after the investigation. The second paragraph is important. Take further notice that the Commission, from the proceeds of its investigations so far, has determined that you own assets disproportionate to your lawful earnings insofar as has been declared, have been declared by you. Consequent on the foregoing, you are invited to attend on the Commission, and we say what the address is, and the date and time to be interviewed for the purpose of providing an explanation to the Director of Investigation or his designate for the purpose of answering questions concerning, your investi concerning the investigation. And then the notice goes into um, the areas that will be covered. Um, we provide attachments, so if there are things that need to be explained, those things are attached. For example, it could be a, a bank statement, it could be a land title, whatever the case may be. Whatever we need to be explained would be attached to the notice. The notice is dispatched in triplicate. Um, one of the copies would be endorsed by the declarant as having been served on them, and that is returned to the commission. Based on what he's explaining, Andrew Oness according to the Integrity Commission, got this exact letterhead that he was under investigation for illicit enrichment. He had to. He had to because there was too much discrepancies. He, he needed to explain this, explain that. If you go over the report, you can see the instances where that definitely happened. So this is this is going back to when he said to us that he didn't know of no knowledge that he was being investigated for illicit enrichment. Allegedly, I think I stop. Let's continue. So that is how they are advised that they. Uh, Please hit the like button, guys. Okay. So let me just be clear and follow the process. If I'm being investigated, Mr. Beresford would indicate to me that he's referring a matter to you, but he doesn't state the nature of it. You would then write to me to say a matter has been referred to, referred to you in relation to me, but at that Blessings. stage, you, you don't include the specific nature of your investigation. Once you have done your due diligence and weighed the evidence, and you have come to a conclusion that you should commence an investigation, you then write that, what I would, I would receive my third correspondence as a declarant then. The first from Mr. Beresford to say you have referred to you. The second from you to confirm that you are in receipt of a referral. And then the third, that having done your preliminary checks, you are now commencing this investigation and you are calling on me to answer these specific um, allegations or charges. Is that correct? Correct in every respect, except to say that at that stage we are not commencing the investigation. We are, commencing. We are continuing we are with coming. the investigation, but we are at a stage where we are asking you to explain assets that we find to be disproportionate to your lawful earnings. And the same principle would apply whether it's an investigation for another matter. So, for example, um, failure to declare um, particular assets, etc. The same principle in terms of the process applies where uh, Mr. Beresford indicates to the declarant that 
a matter has been referred to you, you acknowledge, and then once you get to a stage where you believe um, they're sufficient, then you write to the decorant. Is that correct? Not in all cases, okay. um, because the illicit enrichment matters are peculiar. It requires that the decorant explain um, their, uh, the, the source of funds for the assets. Uh, so it is not done in the very same way, but there may be a time during the course of the investigation that the decorant would be called in to answer questions, for example, on the caution. After having collected the evidence and we are satisfied that the, there is sufficient there to, 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 to arouse our suspicion that an, an offence has been committed. Then and I read the report and they had meetings at his office according to the report. All of it is documented. Me and McQueen yeah, the other day went through most of the rigmarole. Shout out to McQueen. Yeah. We went through that first part of the detail, the boring part. Where it showed you all of the correspondence of the dates and times and what was done and what was happening when they received this, who they interviewed, who came in, who wrote uh, sending a letter to declare that they were the detail of the report, everything is there. So how is it that the Prime Minister made the statements that he made? Man, oh man, boy, it gets worse for him, boy. Boy, I tell you, boy. We'll call them in at that stage. But mm -mm -mm. each investigation, of course, will, will turn on their facts. Mm -mm -mm. Hope y'all paying attention. <laughs> Relating to this, or. Veronica, what's right. up, Veronica? So, um, I recognize Salute to you. Member Charles and then Member Malahu Fortis. In that order. Guys, hitting the like button is free. You understand what I'm saying? It's free. And I appreciate y'all watching. Can you please hit the like button for me? Thank you. It takes a second. I got over 300 people watching. And and, and, and I don't have 200 likes. That That's crazy to me. Please hit the like button. Thank you. Well, I have some specific questions and comments. Um, but not relating to this. But in relation to this particular, to follow up. The notice of which you explained a while ago um, falls within the context of Section 53.3 of the Act still, correct? Hey, Esther. Let, let, me, let me assist you. Let me assist you. Um, I'm referring to the section, I'm trying to pull it up. Oh, man. That appears to restrict public commentary on matters before they are tabled in the parliament. Such a notice provided to anyone. If Julian Robinson as a member of the parliament were to receive such a notice. Oh, I see where you're going with as this. As explained a while ago regarding illicit enrichment. You, director, would still expect that it would be treated within section 53, subsection 3 of the act. And that would not be then part of what would be public knowledge until it is tabled in parliament. What's the first I thing see, you do? I see where he's going with this. <laughs> but that's lame. That's lame. Thank you very much, Chairman. Yes, indeed. Um, the, the notice, having received the notice, the decorant is, or anybody else who comes into contact with the notice, should not breach Section 53 by announcing that there is an investigation. And you may refer to Section 56, that is even more restrictive than Section 53, that requires that all information in relation to complaints, statutory declaration, any matter before the Commission be kept strictly secret and confidential by members of the Commission, staff, as well as anybody who has an official function in relation to the Integrity Commission Act. I paraphrase, so you, you'd have to check the Section 56 um, for the wording. No, I want to thank you for that clarification because I think that a lot of um, individuals in our society uh, perhaps had a misunderstanding of the parameters within which one ought to operate in those, um, in those kind of matters, particularly the matter as raised by Member Robinson. So you say 53.3 is followed by Section 56 regarding the confidentiality of these matters prior to tabling. I have some other questions, Chairman, but... 
I don't want to jump over. Uh, Mrs. Malibu Fort had a... Before Yo! Let me go back to that. More you were a brother officer. Because I don't see significance why I even bring up that. To be honest with you. I really don't see it. Me, did I miss something? Well, I have some specific questions and comments, um, but not relating to this, but in relation to this particular, to follow up, the notice of which you explained a while ago um, falls within the context of Section 53.3 of the Act still, correct? Let, let, me, let me assist you. Let me assist you. The section, try and pull it up. that appears to restrict public commentary on matters before they are tabled in the past. Yeah, public commentary, but the people that we are investigate. Yeah, public commentary, but the people that are investigated, the people that are a part of the investigation, the one in the Integrity Commission. Such a notice provided to anyone. If Julian Robinson, as a member of the Parliament, were to receive such a notice, um, as explained a while ago, regarding illicit enrichment, you, Director, would still expect that it would be treated within Section 53, Subsection 3 of the Act, and that would not be then part of what would be public knowledge until it is tabled in Parliament. All right. So you must say, if Julian was to receive a notice, it's supposed to be kept secret. Let's listen to this. Thank you very much, Chairman. Yes, indeed, um, the, the notice, having received the notice, the declarant is, or anybody else who comes into contact with the notice, should not breach Section 53 by announcing that there is an investigation. And Oh, so the person, the person that actually gets the notice, that is the declarant, that gets the notice, is not supposed to or anybody else that comes in contact with the notice is not supposed to breach the act so they're supposed to stay silent they're not supposed to tell anybody about the investigation hmm interesting if that's the case they need to explain why that is why the individual that is being investigated should not tell anybody that he's being investigated i can understand the people that are actually you know involved in investigating the person but if the declarant gets the declarant is the prime minister I prime minister i'm not talking about you know that's why i'm asked a question later right so make we go back uh, more of my people and get clarity because i know me understand what i must say all right of the act and that would not be then part of what would be public knowledge until it is tabled in parliament thank you very much chairman yes indeed um the the notice having received the notice the declarant is or anybody else who comes into contact with the notice should not breach section 53 by announcing that there is an investigation and you may refer to section 56 that is even more restrictive than section 53 that requires that all information in relation to complaints statutory declaration any matter before the commission be kept strictly secret and confidential by members of the commission staff as well as anybody who has an official function in relation to the integrity commission act i have paraphrased so you you'd have to check the section 56 um for the wording okay okay all right i respect it we learned something that's big that's huge that's huge that's huge because i was on the prime minister i think all of us was on the prime minister as to why he, did, he wasn't honest with us about the fact that he's being investigated. So, according to that act that he just displayed, what I'm understanding, and if I'm wrong, 
somebody that you know is 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 the expert let me know what i'm understanding from that is he couldn't tell us that he was under investigation for illicit enrichment he couldn't tell us the details of the investigation but i wonder um could he tell us that he's being investigated any at all And I am, this is a raw reaction, ladies and gentlemen. This is my raw reaction. I don't know where this is going. All right? <laughs> no, I want to thank you for that clarification because I think that a lot of um, individuals in our society uh, perhaps had a misunderstanding of the parameters within which one ought to operate in those, um, in those kind of matters, particularly the matter. All right, all right, all right, I really don't like this pompous, um, this, this individual. I, I just want to ensure that my other two questions way. are answered. The one related to the percentage of investigations that are referred to third, third parties and the rationale for that. And then in relation to the, um, the decision not to publish contracts and whether the Integrity Commission is open to independent legal advice on that particular provision and to ask the specific provision in the Integrity Commission Act that the Integrity Commission has relied on to support its decision. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Um. Thank you. Mr. And then the reason why I say could he have told us that he's been investigated at all is because members of the pmp was asked by the leader if they were being investigated and they said not that they're aware of right so the fact that he asked them and he's a legal attorney it means that you can at least disclose whether you're being investigated or not you don't have to give details about the investigation so there's a caveat in my opinion to that you cannot say he's being investigated for illicit enrichment but there is some type of investigation i believe he can say that that's my understanding huh. chairman and committee members we are happy to be here and to answer your questions there are two matters i want to address uh member chuck um made a comment about reports being sent by the director of investigation to the commission or to the executive director the executive director has no substantive function when it comes to investigation reports it's merely procedural and the process is governed by section 541 of the interior commission act and i'll just read it and it's important so that we can bring clarity to this thing because i've also seen it on social media the ed has absolutely no role to play when it comes to investigations it says on completion of an investigation the director of investigation shall prepare and submit to the commission, not to me, to the commission, through the executive director, a report of his findings and, and recommendations. So it's, it merely comes through me. And for clarity and for full understanding, we can tell you what the process is. The director of investigation sends me the report. It's um, password protected in case it gets somewhere, but it, it comes to me by electronic means. Mm -hmm. Once I receive it, literally within minutes, and this applies to all the reports I've gotten over the past nearly five years, I send it to all five commissioners by email. And then via another means, which I will not disclose, I send the password. And that's all I do. He sends to me, and I send to all the commissioners, and I copy him so that he knows that it has been sent to the commissioners. And he would have provided me with the password by another means, and I will send that password to the commissioners. That's all I do. And then once the commissioners decide in, in keeping with section 54.4, that report should be tabled into Parliament. They instruct me to proceed. And then the, the cover letters that you see, which are accompanied in... Double speaks. What up, Broski? That's it. So, Member Chuck, I hope that clears it up. Um, so it's not that it comes to me or the Commission. It's always going to the Commission, but through me. The third question that um, Member Robbins asks, I can address that. Member Robbins asked about the QCA reports. These are quarterly contract award reports. I had developed that concept back in 2006 when I was contractor general. And um, the Office of the Contractor General during my tenure and subsequent to the end of my tenure 
or under the stewardship of uh, Mr. Dirk Harrison, had continued to publish these on a quarterly basis. And I can tell you that up to now, uh, in 2024, so it's 2006 to 2024, we're still getting the information from public sector agencies. And a report on that is actually the Director of Investigation on under whose portfolio that falls still reports on it. Because remember, the Director of Investigation has assumed all the functions that the former Contractor General had. So public bodies, you'll be happy to hear, still provide that information on a routine basis. But we, we don't publish the database as we used to. And we stopped publishing it after we consulted among ourselves within the Commission as to whether or not the continuation of the publication of the database would violate Section 56. Now, Member Robinson, you said 53. 53 doesn't concern the QC, it's 56. And we hear references to the gag clause, which is 53.3, which speaks to a prohibition not to talk about investigations until the report they're on a table in Parliament. But the thing about it, the irony about it, is that Section 56.1 is much wider in its purview than 53.3. If you didn't have 53.3 under 56.1, you couldn't do what 53.3 says you can't do. So it's 56. That's a relevant section, and I'll read it for you. Subject to section 42.3b, and 42.3b is a section which uh, requires the Commission to publish the annual summary statutory declarations or a summary of the statutory declarations of the Leader of the Opposition and the Prime Minister. So it says, subject to that, every person having an official duty under this Act, which means all of us, commissioners and employees, or being employed or otherwise concerned in the administration of this Act, hereinafter call a concerned person, shall regard and deal with as secret and confidential. And then it specifically addresses certain categories of items, and then it has a catch-all, or what lawyers will know as a system generous clause. Uh, it says, rega shall regard and deal with as secret and confidential all information, statutory declarations, government contracts, prescribed license, and all other matters relating to any matter, any matter before the Commission, except that no disclosure made by the Commission or other concerned persons in the proceedings for an offence under this Act or under the Perjury Act by virtue of Section 17 of that Act shall be deemed inconsistent with any duty imposed by this section. So in a nutshell, what it does is that it prohibits or it requires all employees of the Commission and the Commissioners to regard as secret and confidential any of the matters listed here including government contracts or any other matter which is before the Commission. Now, I've heard talk that a matter is only before the Commission if uh, and it goes on, but it's very clear. It says any information dealing with statutory declarations, government contracts, license, or any other matter before the, co the Commission shall be treated as secret and confidential. And section, subsection 3 of that section makes it a criminal offence, punishable by fine or imprisonment for any of us to do that. Now, Chair, I agree with Member Robinson that this section is drafted much too wide, and perhaps it was not the intention of Parliament for it to capture so many things. And we have addressed that in our, our uh, proposals for an amendment to the Act. The best side hustle to do in 2024 is to get a fully remote online job that takes two hours a day to do and that pays six to $12,000 a month. Yes, an actual job. I know it's and so we share your position on that, because a lot of things about this provision uh, runs contrary to Jamaica's treaty obligations on the United Nations Convention uh, Against Corruption and also the Inter-American Convention Against Corruption which spawned our Corruption Prevention Act. And we have said that in our recommendations to Parliament, the Joint Select Committee and this committee, in terms of proposal to have some minutes, it's too wide. We understand that there must be a balance. You know, some things must be considered sensitive and confidential and kept that way, but this goes too far and we have submitted that. Uh, so it now comes to the question as to, you know, uh, opinions. Now, as you go through this piece of legislation, as all of us had, and I found innumerable instances of what you call conflicts of law. I lectured law for 10 years. Wow. And it's not, it's not unusual for pieces of legislation to have clear conflicts of law. And, and Mr. Chairman, this is perhaps one of the reasons why it's very important to have this process and the Joint Select Committee process, where we review the legislation to identify those possible conflicts, where you're looking at things that you know this could never be. You pointed out one earlier, Section 63A, which says that the Commission shall not be subject to the direction of any authority. And I gather that someone else on, on that side is saying something else. These are clear same conflicts. Act. Yes, same act. And so it's important that these things are brought to light. And the Parliament, through 
review and discussion with us, give an opportunity to review them and decide exactly what is it that Parliament wants and then to amend the law. You're going to have conflicted interpretations. We have heard one, you know, that sort of thing. But I think these are provisions which are ripe for consideration and they are ripe for review and amendment for Parliament to reflect actually what it is that they want. But as our chairman said, we believe in the rule of law and we try to reflect that in our work. And as I said, we did not just get up one day and say that we're not, we're going to stop publishing the databases. That database uh, has over, I think, quarter million dollars, quarter million dollar, quarter million uh, contract award entries running into over a trillion dollars. Um, someone pointed out on social media recently that the Gojek site um, replaces that. It can't. This, our database, is, there have been tracking contracts awarded from May 1, 2006. And it's, it's, that's almost 20 years. And it's freely searchable by any member of parliament, any member of the public. No member of the public can just go on the Gojek site and search for contracts. In any event, they won't find it going back to 2006. Only the Interim Commission having uh, assumed the responsibilities and all the data and resources coming from the Office of Contractor General has that information in its repository. And it's very important. It's a great tool for transparency because it tells the taxpayer how their money is being spent. If public mm. bodies A, um, you want to track all the contracts it has awarded since 2006 up to now to a particular contractor, you can get it like that and it tells you everything. You can put in all sorts of permits. Right, Noreen. So, so, so just, just a follow-up on this, as, um, have all your questions been? All right, let's have that. To the third question, Chairman, through you, uh, Member Robinson has asked the, for the percentage of cases that have been referred to external entities, as well as what is the rationale for um, referring matters or not. I just did a quick calculation over the five years period, it's uh, just over 3% of, of cases that have been referred to external entities. Uh, when we are looking at cases generally, uh, and whether or not they should be referred, we have to be mindful of the remit of the Commission, although there are other entities with um, similar or complementary powers, um, we have to be careful not to divest the functions that we are to perform, particularly um, when you look at the, the independence of the Commission um, in the treatment of matters having to do with uh, public officials and whether other entities enjoy the same um, independence. Now, what we do and what you will see coming out of the investigation report, reports that have been tabled so far, is the request for information from other entities, for example, competent authorities. You'll see, for example, requests for statements, information from the tax administration, <laughs> um, etc. We also ask for information from the FID uh, to assist with our investigations. There are also opportunities for, for um, joint investigation, um, and it depends. Um, so far, um, the Commission has been invited to participate in joint investigation by other entities, and um, we are presently participating in at least one or two of those investigations. So the, the rationale around this is really the subject matter. What is the subject matter that is being investigated? Can we pass this on to another entity to investigate it, to, to be investigated, particularly if they do not have the, the remit to investigate that matter? Um, and if you look at, for example, at statutory declaration related matters, um, who would we refer it to to be investigated? For example, um, they, if you're looking at just purely the statutory declaration, then of course, you will have to refer to the, the functions of the commission to investigate these matters and whether that can be carried out by another entity. But as I've said, we've cooperated with other entities. We have, from time to time, meetings. Um, we try to do them on a quarterly basis, uh, particularly in recent times. We are trying to get back to our quarterly meetings with our competent authorities and other partners to ensure that we keep um, good relations so that we can share information where it is possible for those that are listed under Section 7 and for those that have not been listed to ensure that we work out a way where we can get information from those entities. Okay, well, um, uh, we are going to continue the discussion. Bear in mind, of course, that we have to 12 o'clock um, today. Uh, well, I may then have to excuse myself, perhaps, and ask you to chair for any further leading up to 1 o'clock. But um, I do have uh, an obligation at, at midday. Uh, but suffice it to say, uh, Christy, is apropos in relation to the, the work of another committee. And I, I, I sit in both capacity. I, as I wear both hats, and I'm fully seized by that. 
and we are particularly seized by the seeming levels of contradiction within the act itself, two of which we raised just in this committee meeting here today. But there are several others, and the breadth and width of it, and what it does, even in instances of, um, you know, threatening to breach natural justice and various areas of, um, you know, individual liberty and so on. So we need to take that deeper look, and I'm very happy that the discussions here have brought out even further the need for us to move faster, in fact, in dealing with these legislative amendments that the JSC is responsible for. And I can give you my assurance that we will be acting very expeditiously on these matters starting the latter part of this month into the end of the year. Chairman, I had a follow-up um, question to what was uh, just sent by Mr. Christie. Uh, he referred to Section 56 as being the relevant section, um, and uh, in my understanding, relating to the constraints placed on members um, and officers working in the Integrity Commission. Um, but as it relates to members of Parliament, for instance, because we're speaking a lot about the parliamentarians, a member of Parliament would uh, be in breach of Section 56 or Section 53.3, if it is that they were under investigation um, and published that, that information. All right? Because we have clarified that members of Parliament under investigation would be in breach of the confidentiality in this Act if they spoke of it. But would it be relating to Section 53.3 or 56, in your opinion, Mr. Christie? <laughs> I want to mm -hmm. hear the answer. Yeah. Me want to hear this. I'm glad to ask you again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Just to indicate, members, that I, I do have an appointment with the non resident. Why the brother you keep Jamaica. interrupting, man? I did make it for 12 o'clock. Brother, I don't want to hear your brother. One question for me to understand. Yes, Chair. Um, Member Charles, I think it's a, a fair question in the circumstances, given the language of both provisions, as to does it prohibit just members of the Commission, employees of the Commission, or does it extend to other persons? Uh, the Commission actually issued a statement with, uh, with respect to Section 53.3 um, the other day when um, there were some reports from at least one media house about our investigation reports which had not yet been tabled in Parliament. One, not reports, one report. And the point that the Commission made was this. It says, and this is what it highlighted. I'll read the entire section and tell you what we were highlighted. Onto the table in Parliament of a report on a section 36. All matters on investigation by the Director of Investigation or any other person involved in such investigation shall be kept confidential and no report or public statement, no report or public statement shall be made by the Commission or any other person or any other person in relation to the initiation or conduct of investigation in this act. So it's a, or any other person. Including members of Parliament. Well, what is Parliament's intention? Parliament wrote the law or any other person. So what, what I was asking, Mr. Christie, not yes. to stop you, but I'm under constraint of time and I have, that's my follow-up to Member Robinson's question, but I haven't posed my question yet. So, so we are clear now, members of Parliament under investigation would be in breach of the confidentiality if they were to expose That's not it. my response. Okay, Gu guys, what is response. your response? What is your response? Guide. I told you my response. I simply said that we issued a statement which alludes to this phrase or any other person. You hey, Bandarang! Hey. <laughs> oh, God! Oh! What do you call it? Bongo Kiat! Oh, my God. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm not getting the answer we want. I'm not getting the answer we want. Me say me glad he asked you again. I decided to call Spinner, man. He want for me him say, no, members of the parliament cannot. And they would have breached the law. No, 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 no more, Paul. I knew it. Hey, you know what's my head no big for nothing? Me is not no liar, but my head no big for nothing. I cannot understand for the life of me why you would be restricted in saying that you are under investigation. I believe the act is saying it's about the details of the investigation. The details of the report. 
Not that you can't tell we say you're under investigation. Hey! Hey, hey! Hey, we don't ramp with me now this blows and skirt down, man. We don't ramp with me now this, you know? Eh? Something not right, my wisdom warriors. Eh? Something is not right. Eh? Hmm. Tell about them. Oh, oh man, 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 I'm probably make up too much noise in our ears. I apologize. But listen to me, man. This is significant. Listen to this. Can interrupt okay. you? Okay. So, so let me make it clear. Yeah. Members of the IC and any other person. That's what the law says. Ought not to speak of these matters until they are tabled. That's what. The that's law what. Says. I, that's. Thank you for the clarification. Now on to says. my question. No, let me, I don't think you're finished. You also ask the same question with respect to section. Uh, Erica Wagwan. No, what I asked originally was whether. <laughs> you would find um, the constraint on a member of parliament within section 56 or within section 53.3. But you went on to, to provide um, commentary on a statement made by the IC around it, which was useful. But you haven't told me if it is that a member of parliament specifically would be constrained member. While, in, while under investigation member in 56 member or Charles. 53.3. Member Charles, you have asked a question and I provide my answer. All I'm telling you is that the law was written by Parliament, and I think Parliament is your problem. Your answer entity. is sufficient. No what's, problem. What's answer your? is sufficient. But let me go on to my, because I, the, the, the clock, we're watching it. Uh, chairman, you know, I. Yo, you see how that brother are rude? Hey, Mr. <laughs> yo, yo, I don't know this brother from nowhere, but I don't like this dude, man. He's super disrespectful, you know? He's a pompous, stiff, naked. I'm talking about man. Talk about thinking too much of yourself. Ah, I think that the matters before us today and the discussion and the report and issues relating to um, the Integrity Commission ought to receive more than the time that we have allocated to it. It is of great importance. But I, I want to say this. Um, thank you for the clarity in relation to any other person that includes members of parliament but let me go he never said that he never said that he never said parliamentarians he never said that to what i see as an insightful and thought-provoking opening from our chairman of the integrity commission this morning who it is an it is an honor for me to be um in the position to listen carefully to what the Honorable Justice Pantan said. And he has made a statement to the nation which is very clear um, and which causes me to have deep concern. Uh, the, the, it is evident the frustration expressed exactly. uh, by the Chair in relation to perhaps the perceptions around the Integrity Commission. And it is concerning to me of the impact that that might have in terms of the operations. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I want to it concerning to you, but they never come out publicly and tell Everal Warmington to because sit down. Eh? You never tell him that. Or you never tell the Prime Minister say you, you can't answer them something. How comes you never tell him that? But it concerning to you. Man, stop the cap. To join with Chairman Pantan in his one, highlighting that our Prime Minister has given full support to the Integrity Commission and acknowledging even the commentary of the Prime Minister in terms of how he views the commission and how he views the importance of his objective. It's important to put that on note so that the public can know that that is the feeling of the integrity commission in relation to the prime minister's stance. Secondly. Oh, that is a, that's a, that's a load of hogwash. He was being sarcastic. You didn't pick that up? Boy, you, whatever you using on that bald head of yours, I'm bald headed too, so I ain't hate. Whatever you using on that bald head of yours, it must be blocking the signal to read the room. It wasn't a compliment. It was to show the hypocrisy of your government. I don't know what he think this is. Boy, if you won't sit down I want somewhere. To, to acknowledge the strong Crazy, bro. of any statements that contribute negatively um, to how our society sees the integrity commission or sees even our engagement. And matter of fact, the, the specific words were such statements that fuel a sort of mood among psychophants and that focus on the society that we live in and that we need to understand persons we have to be careful of what we say and in that context um it, it brother 
you, you need to go preach that to Everal Warmington and the brother with the pan the screen there, so Mackenzie. At them you need to go tell that. You don't need to tell nobody else that. He said it is it it's concerning to him because he has ambitions um to because a JLP leader. So he has tried to paint himself as different. Oh, oh! So he have ambitions to become the prime minister of the country. Oh, okay. Even though this is this, you know, this was not the intention when I stepped into the parliament this morning, but because of the statements, I'm, I'm compelled to ask of the commission's perspective in that context on statements that have been made by the executive director in September 2023. Uh, when following the unfortunate incident oh yeah no yeah no uh, we heard a response ask the, saying, government. ask the government that yeah. ask them what it means yes i note the response in writing the explanation but i would like to know objectively and this is not an attack it is in an attack we should be able to have this is an attack he came to attack the integrity commission Boy, honest open conversation you. and the country wants to know this so let us put it to rest today what chairman pantan is your perspective on those comments from your from our executive director following such a significant and unfortunate incident do you consider those statements to be statements that you would categorize as such that fuel a sort of mood among psychophants and statements within uh, the the cat man bro i can't and listen then, to this dude man yes chairman i really can't i'm sorry guys I, yo i can't listen to this dude he irritates the shit out of me. He he really does. Watch your boss now. Watch Not your really boss. Now. In an argumentative mood today. Mm. In a very docile mood today. I'm surprised that that, that statement by the in executive director has um, been raised again. The fact of the matter is that those of us who are on the commission were in a position then at the time of the incident to, to understand why the executive director reacted as he did now there were some very serious security concerns i don't want to go in depth mm -hmm. but i have to say because i have been asked that commissioner anderson commissioner of police anderson gave certain instructions to one of his senior members and those instructions were not carried out. Ah! Had those instructions been carried out. The incident would not have happened. May well not have happened. Ah! In respect of Director Evans. Okay. And in fact, Mr. Chairman, as a result, you see what you're gonna do now. You're gonna raise up the antsness of the historical deficiencies of the police force that is under who your government. That's why man say oxy government. So you're not, you're not going to like the answer now, no, because I shoot him and attack him. No. The man said, at the time, instructions was given that was not carried out. And if those instructions were carried out, there wouldn't be a safety issue. Come on, man. Drop a bomb on that, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Drop a bomb on that, man. Drop a bomb on that, man. What? Hey, if you gonna fire shots, boy, you better be ready for shots to be fired back, you heard? Talking about you not trying to be controversial while being controversial. You think, bro, you think you slick? You think you slick, Junior? Boy, if you don't, boy. Result of the disregard of the instructions of Commissioner of Police Anderson, I had to write a letter. To the prime minister of jamaica mm. copied to the minister of national security mm. exactly one week one week before this incident and there's much more i could say but the reaction by the ed was to our mind understandable justified i leave it hey come on man. hey i like this bro i like this thing. <laughs> Yeah! 
talk to me that hey shout out to cutting edge my broski in the building all man. lies will be exposed that's yeah. all and, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong man way. listen i didn't even know that because i didn't know about that incident so you telling me there was some deficiencies in the securities of the ic's to the point where this man had to write the letter and it still wasn't done boy if you don't boy if you don't sit out somewhere i wonder how you gonna respond to this i wonder how you gonna respond it was justified the response at the time because these people were allegedly not protected oh <laughs> oh, oh and that raised the question and that raises the question that raises the question, why wasn't they protected? Why, why was there that deficiency? <laughs> Is that that? <laughs> crickets you hear that crickets i'm not saying anything more on it mr crickets crickets yes so well crickets i know for sure it is final he's not speaking further on it but um you know chairman pantan i speak directly to you in saying um, clearly you know i have no um intention of being antagonistic to you bro bro stop the cap stop the cap oh man you better hope you're not one of the goddamn illicit eight man, you don't. that would cause me to be um scolded in other places however i am compelled to ask the question because we sit here not just in our own individual capacity but we sit here representing the nation a nation that has asked questions and it may be best for me to pose them in this way uh, because it gives an opportunity for the Integrity Commission to ventilate an issue, which is critical. The Integrity Commission is one of the most important in institutions in our country. And we don't want a situation where you, Chair, or your commissioners feel in any way that the Parliament is attacking. Um, and when I note your opening... Brother, no matter what you say, man, then don't know that already, and Jamaica know that too. ...opening remarks, I note your reference to our psychologists um, perhaps assessing us. <laughs> and us needing to examine what we are digesting as it may be impacting us in particular in terms of how uh, how we operate and and that's not that's not the kind of engagement that i believe the country would want uh, between the I you can't speak for your country we don't want the integrity commission friend nobody in our parliament they are supposed to be partisan we know our friend we don't want the integrity commission member them friend no no oh no we don't want a body body business. We don't want none of that. Neither the PMP nor the JLP. You cannot investigate somebody if they are your friend and your buddy buddy. And your guys are having drinks together. No, 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 no. We are not friends, sir. That's the integrity commission on you. You not a friend. So big up the IC if you're standing on business. What do you mean? Oh my god. Easy. Don't give me some money, huh? Crazy, bro. They see in the parliament, nor is it the kind of perception that you want. So it is our responsibility to dispel that and to remedy it if it is that there are things that have been done or are being done to cause you to feel that way. You are. Brother, the man then shut off for the man them. Zane, the man then could have lost their life. Right? There's no remedy in that. You see me? So the man then learn from that now. And they know if we move. So just move on. Because there's nothing where you can say. Because Jamaican people don't see what I go on. Well, think you Jamaican them are right. If you don't understand what I go on, put that one in our chat. Are an important, important element in terms of advancing transparency and accountability in our country. And, and, uh, Chairman, a big part of that also requires us to look into the integrity commission itself. Because as I've said before, advancing integrity must require you to have integrity and it must require you 
not just to have integrity. So the man a question the integrity commission integrity, and he must say now nah, attack the integrity commission. Yo, brother, I would you for? Yo, you know some, you know some, you know some, you know end of life. But for the country to have confidence in you being a person of integrity. Hello, the Ongo people we don't have confidence in our own. The Jamaica Labour Party. You member good. We don't have no problem with the Integrity Commission. So nobody speak for Jamaicans. And I hope the Integrity Commission member them is watching this live stream right now. May have full confidence in our director or the commissioner. He brother in our glasses. A man of God. May have full confidence in you, my general. I love how you conduct yourself. And you stand for truth and rights and justice. A man of integrity. Tell him to repent. So then they are church and they are making pastor drop down. Are we man? Allegedly. And those perceptions are critical. And sometimes the reality and the perception does not meet. But we can't afford for that in these kind of circumstances. For instance, you can't control perception, brother. If people and don't see what they see already, there ain't nothing you can do. Uno and no we are out. You understand? Out. Uno out. Uno ultra is loading. And that's all you have to understand, brother. No matter what you do, you can't remedy this. There's no remedy. Right? It's so gone beyond remediation, if that's a word. There's no healing process. And chair, and and start, girl. Chairman, Again, we speak about uh, the... Big up LD, um, Bavrian, Cuban. What do you mean? Put in the one in our chat if you don't agree with me. Society and the need for us to ensure that we are careful uh, in how we operate. And from time to time, we hear comments about this matter that unfortunately occurred with Director Evans. Um, and we even hear about the delay in responding to police officers. I don't know if it is true. I'd like to know as a member. Claudette Ward, don't it? Because these are the things that are impacting the perceptions that the public have on the operations of the integrity commission it could be not true but i'd like to know is it that there was a delay in signing the witness statements a delay in responding to the police that has caused these perceptions to fuel because we cannot contend with an integrity commission that some members or too many members of the society including members of parliament do not have confidence in you have to know a people in a jamaica now have no problem with the integrity commission go sit down that you have to cover a program brother here and I've heard before commentary about Director Evans being a former advisor. Yo, maybe want you don't want someone here, as a member of any person, I'm still attack. I'm still attack. Being on I'm still attack. Able to say how? I don't get so much time to talk. I feel well. I want to go on as concern. What is? Under, uh, what is? We don't have yeah, time for this. I see. Brother, I could attack till you're blue. Only brother, I'm leaving. Want to answer while you're present. I want to answer. It will be short. It will be short. It is nonsense for this. It is nonsensical for there to be any discussion in respect of Director Evans. Director Evans went through a regular process for recruitment and employment and was appointed by the Governor General. Now, we need to bear in mind that Director Evans has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with reports. Nothing. His job is to go out there and inform people in respect of corruption. He has nothing to do with reports or prosecutions or non-prosecutions. And the fact of the matter is that we need to remember that our second, third and fourth governors, governors general were active politicians. So bear that in mind when people are talking about, about somebody having worked with a politician for a period. Our second, third and fourth governors general were senior active politicians for all their lives. And they served the country well. And this question of partisanship, we need to debunk it. And there is no question about the leak being attached to the commission unless you can prove it. Why would there be a leak while the thing is pending in the commission? Straight. And why is it as soon as it reaches parliament, there is a leak? Straight. Think about that. Burn it fire. Burn it fire, yes. Oh, you mean? I can know what time it is. Yo, Maria, hey. Yo, me respect that brother, yeah, brother. Hey, big up the integrity commission. I'm um, general. Oh, I'm um, team. What a boy they are doing. Hey, go sit down, you know? All lies will be exposed. Oh, That's all. Um, to the and, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong come, way. Come take over your blows and skirt. 
Oh, why do we have so much time for talk? So, I, with, with respect, I think the direction that this is going, yeah, and I believe that... Um, come, come, start up and stay, and come, come, what go and join? An answer is necessary. Um, yes, I do believe an answer is necessary, and I'll allow the uh, member Charles to complete what he has to say um, in the presence of uh, member Chuck in the chair while I discharge this other duty and come right back to the meeting of this commission. So, Yo, I don't mean, want to hear nothing with a brother the officer. I fast forward me, I fast forward that. You move and go from us. Oh, man. Thank you, Chair. And let me, I, I, I took the, the opportunity when posing my questions before to reiterate that I have no intention. Brother, you can't tell us you have no intention while your actions are show your intention. Rubbish. Rubbish. Can you come bring up things from way back at Timbuktu and when you get your answer? No, you want to give deliberation like you, you have a speech for your party. The man them don't respect you, brother. The man them don't trust you with good reason to. You think some man can come shoot off of me? I mean, I not even know what I know now. Say, the man them go so bops and the man they never have the right, uh, right protection or uh, timely protection. And if that they go on, the man them with the alright, they won't not nothing like that could happen. Yo, I'm to you. Brother Junker chew chew Ahmed Ball like the bird him call the bird Junker. <laughs> but past the name was Junker. <laughs> so it's so <laughs> black people sleep. See more we are dealing. Of being antagonistic. Brother, I mean, yo, the man just had to lie to you in teeth, brother. Yo, and you think so when he's talking a calm voice, that makes sense. That, me, that means that uh, means him nah, he, nobody uh, Yo, brother, yo. Yo, right now. As tabled. Um, I'm trying to... Huh? Mr. Where reach you now. Turn, turn the mic off for the moment. Guided by section 54, I do not see under this section a provision for interim reports. In the preparation of investigation reports and the conduct of um, to um, turn the mic off for the moment. Let me, me hear the last part of this man here. He marks a whole lot of questions here, to you. Presiding, um, to Member Charles, in the preparation of investigation reports and the conduct of investigations. I am only guided by section 54. I do not see under this section a provision for interim reports. So, so all the reports that have been tabled are final reports? 54, yes. All right, um, member Fort has not asked. Uh, will you allow her to ask some questions why, before? Why would they table a, poor, a report that's not final? Well, 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 that makes sense. Yo, Aldian. What? what? Colleen. What? Oh, what's wrong with the JLP? Yo, yo, people might have think some of me are PMP, but me are PMP, you know? But just I listen to them, just, yo, bro, what? Members, uh, Robinson. Oh, no. I'm allowing you. No, but they had their mics on before you. Well, he, he said that there's no nothing as interim report. So everything is final report. That's the understanding I'm having from him. Is that so, Director? Once the report is, is submitted under Section 54, Chairman, I believe it is a final report. Um, and that, well, as far as I can see under the section, there's no such provision for interim report. Yeah. So I just thank you, Chairman. I, you see. We can't afford oh any, any misinterpretation God. of what is said. So I, I, I think it is critical for us to, to be clear what, what the director is saying. He's clear. That anything put forward is a final report and there is no room for interim reports. Member Ford. Table before the parliament. Thank you, Chairman. I join in welcoming the commission and its staff to the, the sitting of the oversight committee. I Who have is? about four or five... Hear me, I say, people... Part two, I have to go run tomorrow, you know. I have to go work. Yeah, man. I have one next hour this. I definitely have to go over this. 
because this is mighty mighty interesting you feel me i say anybody want to call in 